Okay, folks, thank you again for watching. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to click on this video. And uh, I've got a game plan now for how I'm going to build this cap that's going to sit up here on top of these ribs. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to build it in, in three pieces. And just so I can get this piece made and get these pieces stabilized, like I mentioned in a couple of previous videos, so we can get rid of that wobble right there. I'm going to make a piece that's just going to be a straight six inch wide piece that's going to sit on top and it's going to go from this line right here right about in the middle of this uh, polling platform structure. It's going to it, it's just going to bridge this span from here to this forward rib and that will take care of this then I can go ahead and get this boat flipped over. What I have right here is a template for the back section of that cap uh, then that's going to be the final shape of it right there and uh, all I have to do is just lay this template on top of my plywood trace it and cut it out and that like I said it's going to have a uh, kind of a little uh, like a 45 degree uh, corner right here and uh, that's just to kind of dress things up a little bit and of course now I'll, I'll round everything over round off the corners and all and we'll take care of that at a later time and this piece and the one for the other side, the, the, the twin for the other side, uh, those will get made at a later time. I can finish those out later because I'm going to have to do some finish work down in here also uh, to bring this around this corner and then attach it to uh, the inner part of the rail right there. So that's it. That's what I'm working on. Uh, as you saw in the previous videos, these pieces are now bonded on and uh, these pieces right here are also bonded on and I think again that just let me shield that mic I think that just dresses up that bow and uh, it just it just makes it look better so that's it I will get back to you here and you're gonna see my hand in front of it I'm trying to shield the mic from the wind we have really really high winds here today in North Texas but uh, that's it that's what I'm gonna work on this afternoon hopefully keep my fingers crossed might try to get these pieces bonded on tonight so all right thanks for watching see you in the next segment okay folks next segment welcome back and uh, what I'm doing right here I think this is called a chine I'm not 100% sure don't quote me on that I could be wrong but I need to get these chines if that's what they're called bonded into place prior to putting the cap on and uh, not a big deal, uh, just a matter, again, like I always say, of letting the glue dry. And so this one's in, and uh, I will get the left side bonded in probably later on tonight. And we're just going to let this set up for a while. And uh, you know, that's about all I can do is wait. So, all right, we will be back with you in the next segment. All right, so I've got these cut to the width that I need them, uh, just a little bit over six inches. And what this is going to do is going to give me a nice wide platform for when I step off the dock. I'll have a place to, to set my foot. I will have this coated with some nine skid. All I have to do now is get these trimmed to the final length and then get them bonded in place. And I tell you what, table saw sure did make it nice. All right. Uh, like I said, I've got them done. I have both sides done. I will get this piece made at a later time. I do have the template. I know how I want that done right there. I know how I want that made. We'll finish that out later. So that's it for now. I'll catch you next segment. Okay, folks, what you see here is the top rail for the left-hand side. I'm getting ready to cut it to final length. And this is a quick little hack right here. You may already know about this if you've uh, done any sort of woodworking for uh, any length of time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the quick, the quick square for a saw guide. And I'm just going to just set it by eyeball where I want my cut line to be. And right about there. And just hold on. To that square really really tight and I'm gonna to need to move this out just a little bit so I can get a grip on it just double check and here goes just 
just like that. Need to make any adjustments, just move it. Because I do want to cut just a little bit closer to that line. Come back, do it again. And the key is, hold on to that square very, very tight with your off hand. Catch you next segment. Well, I had every intention of bonding these caps on this afternoon. I got a little free time today. I was not expecting to take off work, but we had some thunderstorms roll through the area last night. Ended up uh, sustaining some hail damage on the wife's van right there and my roof took a pretty good beating too so uh, that's why we pay insurance right now it has started to rain again and it's starting to blow back into the garage just a little bit and this wood even though it's that good Maranti ring grade plywood it's not protected yet i don't have any kind of uh, resin coating or anything on there to protect that so i'm gonna close the garage door down i might get out here tonight and get these caps bonded in so we'll just uh we'll just see what the weather does next segment hey folks welcome back so i'm on the gopro and i'm getting ready to mix up my resin and get everything wet down both sides same thing over there and uh, you always uh, wet down both parts with resin with epoxy resin before you add the thickening agent and apply the thickened epoxy. I only put the thickened epoxy on one surface, but um, when I'm wetting it down with resin, I wet down both parts. So, um, all right, I gotta put the camera down now so I can uh, get everything mixed up. Okay, we are recording. So, got all the parts wet down, just like you saw in that last video on those other parts. And uh, we're ready to go. Here's the epoxy. Oh, one more thing, very, very crucial. Right here, Diet Dr. Pepper, otherwise known as Beer for Baptists. Oh yeah, we'll come back to that. And I'm going to do it a little different this time from about this point forward. I'm going to just speed up the video.
Okay, folks, that is it. Uh, when I wet this down with the resin, it took quite a bit more resin than I thought it was going to, and that was four shots. Uh, four shots of resin, four shots of hardener, and it still, I used up just about all of my thickened epoxy. So I'm gonna stop the camera right here. I'm gonna finish out uh, some of the uh, fillet work that I need to do and then I'm just going to repeat the process for that other side I was hoping to do both sides at once I am going to have to get that done because that's already wet down so uh, but that's it you get the general idea and so we got the this is the right hand side this is now bonded in place and so I'll do the left hand side here uh, momentarily but thank you for watching Just like that, the left side is done. Just finished getting that bonded in, getting all the clamps on it, and that'll just stay there until in the morning. That's that slow hardener. A little bit cool tonight. And uh, yeah, all we can do is wait. All right, thanks for watching. Hey folks, welcome back. Well, uh, just like that, uh, this boat is ready to be flipped over on its top, and I'm ready to start putting the hull on. Uh, tonight, I want to talk about a common misconception that a lot of people have about God. Uh, I've had conversations with people uh, multiple times in the past who have this idea that the Bible uh, is like this rule book with this list of do's and don'ts, and that God is this angry, uh, distant figure, this unapproachable figure who's, who's sitting high up on a mountaintop and he's just sitting up there just waiting to hurl you know, lightning bolts down on anyone who breaks his rules and he, he's waiting to just punish anybody who, who messes up for just the slightest little offense. Neither of those notions could be further from the truth. The Bible is God's revelation of himself to the world. The Bible contains uh, the plan of salvation, and yes, the Bible does give us rules to live by, but those rules were not given to us to, to hurt us or to, to impose any kind of burdens on us. The rules that God has instructed us to live by, uh, they were given to us uh, not to hurt us, but to keep us from getting hurt. Uh, there for our benefit. The, they guide us and they help us live the kind of lives that are pleasing to God. Uh, if you tell your, your five-year-old child, uh, don't touch the hot stove, it, it, it's because you don't want that child to get third-degree burns. It's not because you just want to be mean to that child. You give your children rules because you love them. And it's the same with God. God has given us uh, rules to live by because he loves us. It's not because he, he wants to hurt us. Um, he didn't give us these rules to live by and then just simply sit back and wait for us to mess up so he can hurl lightning bolts down at us. You know, if that was the case, I'd be a human lightning rod. Now, none of this is to say that uh, God is not going to judge those who reject Jesus Christ on the day of judgment because, uh, you know, there is going to be a final day of judgment. But anyone who rejects Jesus Christ, uh, they will have done so uh, willfully. And uh, they will know full well, and they will have had ample warning. Um, but that, that's a different matter. That's, that's just an entirely different matter. Also, that's not to say that God does not discipline his children you know, when we sin, when we mess up, because he, he most certainly does uh, uh, discipline us you know, when we sin. In Deuteronomy 8, verse 5, uh, we're told, Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, we're told again, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves, just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. When you see a principle being repeated throughout the Bible, and it's repeated multiple times, it tells us that the message being conveyed is one that's especially important to God. And it's important that we understand the lesson that he's trying to teach us. The author of Hebrews 
uh, he quoted that passage from Proverbs in the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews in verses five, in verses five and six, and then went on to say, for our earthly fathers disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them. But God disciplines us for our good so that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems unpleasant and painful, yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. So there you have it, folks. God is not just waiting for us to mess up. He's not waiting uh, uh, to, to hurl lightning bolts at us. Uh, like I said, nothing could be further from the truth. In his great mercy and out of his abundant love, He's waiting for us to come to him and enter into a loving relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. That is the God that we serve. Now that's the message that I wanted to share with you tonight. Remember this channel is a ministry. I do take prayer requests and you can leave those in the comments section down below. I do moderate my comments, but I do check the comments uh, several times a week and I will get those posted. So until we meet again, uh, may God richly bless you and yours. Remember, God loves you, and thank you for watching. Good night.